Welcome to the future of transportation. In this world where innovation meets sustainability, the paradigm shift towards new energy vehicles, or as we call them, NEVs, is reshaping how we commute, how we save, and how we envision a relationship with automobiles. NEVs have surged in population in China. They remained untapped in other parts of the world, like United States, especially the American consumer. Now the average American loses a small fortune throughout their lifetime on buying cars, depreciation. I can give you an example. My sister has lost, I would say, probably a quarter of a million dollars on all her car upgrades since she's been a school teacher in North America. Now enter the Chinese new energy vehicles, offering a solution that slashes the operational costs and maintenance of cars by almost Get it? 90%. Imagine what that can mean for your savings or your financial stability. Why haven't cost-saving cars like these entered the market in North America? Well, it's not the lack of demand or the need. It's about the commitment and collaboration. And that means from the car companies to the governments. The Chinese government has invested in this collaboration, setting the stage for the rise of the new energy vehicles. They're everywhere here in the city of Chongqing. Okay, now meanwhile in North America, political focus tends to revolve around the corporate interests hindering the strides towards change that benefit the average citizen like you. Chongqing, located in southwest China here, something special is happening. They're spearheading the revolution, offering a glimpse into the future where sustainability meets affordability, where transportation evolves for the betterment of all. Well, I welcome you to the new motor city called Chongqing, China. Compared to European and American new energy vehicles, personally, I think one of the biggest features of the Chinese NEVs is that the functions are very comprehensive and powerful. And this is Avatar's engineer, Santi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Alex. This is the first model of Avatar company. So the, the name is Avatar 1.1. This model is generated by three giants in the Chinese automobile industry, Huawei, Chang'an, and ZTL. Chang'an empowers the um, manufacturing, uh, research and development, and also the quality control for this car. And for Huawei, we can see there is a HI logo here, which means we have a Huawei full stack intelligent solution on this model from software to hardware. What a beautiful car. Yes, and for CATL, it empowers with the power battery, power management, and also the charging network. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful product. Wow, what an interactive panel here. It's my first time in the Avatar 1.1. Santi, these chairs, they feel wonderful. I hear there is kind of like a massage yeah. uh, way to help uh, the driver and passenger, maybe yes. for fatigue or... So, as you mentioned, for the massage, we have the button here. This is the control of the massage. Okay. And we have three level oh, I feel that of already. the massage. And also, you have a different type of the massage. You can check in on the waist, on the shoulder, and it has a lot of, like this, a waving cat step and the snake step. <laughs> so, yeah, this is the different good. type of massage, and you can choose in like this level three, level two, a little bit softer, and the level one. Now, is there any, uh, let's say you're in a colder climate, is there a heat yes. that you can put into the chair as well? Sure. This is a heat um, on the chair. Okay. If you uh, open it, it's the heat. But mm -hmm. in this summer, right, we yeah. use the uh, cooler. So this is the air vent and it also has three levels to be controlled. Three, two, one. All those materials where we can touch by our skins, right. those are antibacterial materials. Mm -hmm. We also have these UV radiators, which could, oh, wow. you know, uh, sensitize all those environment. So a lot of features that I guess, this is very advanced from many years ago, stepping yeah. into a car. And it looks like, now who's powering this? Is this part of your, uh, Avatar 1.1's intellectual property, or is yes. there other companies helping out with this? Yes, this is a um, design, because this is a, a, we are OEMs, so all those functions, they are coming from other suppliers, mm -hmm. and also 
it's coming designed by the Avatar 1.1. So this is a central control display. Uh, it controls almost all the functions on this vehicle. And also that is an uh, entertainment um, display for the passenger. Okay. You can watch a movie, you can uh, carry OK, and uh, <laughs> you can see a lot of things like pictures over there. And this is the cluster for the drivers, okay. which shows um, when we on the road, there will be more information. Since these are always updating and always thinking, maybe from a security standpoint, also from a software standpoint, is this over the air? Like I could be driving and if my car needs to update, mm -hmm. is it going to update just wirelessly? Yes, it's wirelessly because we are connecting to the uh, 5G network. Santi, so no keys. Yes. Uh, can anybody just get in this car and drive? No, we have this <laughs> car or you can use your phone to okay. get into this car. And let's say your son, your daughter, old enough to drive. Yes. How can they get in without this and this? Okay, so if your son or your daughter, they have another phone, smartphone, yeah. and they have these um, avatar apps on okay. their phone, you can authorize them the authorization, then they can get into the car. So gone are the days of lost keys for cars. Yes. Ah, outstanding. Let's yes. hit the road. Yes, let's go. What mapping system are we using here? Mapping system, we are using Gauda and Huawei. So we are dual mapping system here on this vehicle. So for example, when we driving like in the autonomous um, driving system, that will be the Huawei ses uh, mapping system. So Huawei uses that in the autonomous vehicle system, right? Yes. And the interesting thing about it is, is as you said, there's two companies that are powering these maps. Again, as China continues to evolve with this technology, mm -hmm. uh, we're just gonna see enhancement after enhancement after yes. enhancement, that's incredible. Yes, with a lot of cars implemented those apps. And I can imagine uh, that probably Ooh. saves the manufacturer of a car a considerable amount of money not having to actually really invest in doing mm -hmm. it alone because we see in the north american car market yes uh we have the big three we call them i believe it's uh, general motors ford i believe it's chrysler that could yes. be the third one they're very competitive against each other mm -hmm. and yes sometimes they do use oems for some of their systems but they are not as advanced as this is yes I think even we're struggling in North America to even get a 5G network yeah. to go. Yes. So immediately the North American cars are at a disadvantage. I believe so. Yeah. Even from probably a safety standpoint, a mapping standpoint, uh, economical standpoint, and really understanding how these vehicles work. Yes. So Santi, I see this map is always changing. Sometimes we see a bit of a color map up on here and yeah. then we have a is that just a preference that we can decide or does the mapping system do that for us? Yes, the mapping system do it by itself. We were talking about uh, you know, new energy vehicles. Yeah. Uh, I can see that this can also be, you know, this technology as well, depending on uh, how advanced we get, but there could be communities like garbage pickup could be driverless if you think about it. Yeah. You know, going to pick up trash in certain yeah. areas. Uh, we'll call it municipal services or even delivery companies. Yeah, deliveries. Actually. Yes, that's also the direction that those because you know there was a uh, calling uh, the items called like the robo taxi. Right. Uh, sharing the, your vehicle and it will be driving autonomously and uh, taxi and we can share uh, from time to time. And when you are using it, you can call it and come back to you. And when you are free for use, and it will go out and uh, pick up others. Wow. And also talking about this um, intelligent um, cabin control system, mm -hmm. it's also supporting the voice control. For example, like, Xiao Tai, Xiao Ta. Open the window. Can you feel the yeah. massage? Yeah, massage is going. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, hearing that, saying that to people that I can relax, uh, get a massage in the chair, the environment is, is great for me, they might think it's dangerous. But in fact, I actually feel more safe in this car because this car is protecting the other cars or in fact communicating yes. with other cars yeah. to actually make these roads more safe. So more the more safe. of these cars that come on yeah. to the market and the more of these cars that get on these highways, 
we're gonna see less accidents. We're gonna see more interactive cars talking to each other and making this environment safe. I believe so. We have to train everyone because this system needs to be learned how to use. For example, like how you go into the autonomous driving system, mm -hmm. autopilot uh, driving system, how you control your vehicle. And for example, how I go to another road, I push the button, uh, the, 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 the handle here, it will sense the vehicles, see the environment. When it's safety, it goes green, goes blue, it coming to another road. It has, been uh, has to be told and has to be learned how to use this system. Mm -hmm. When they're passing that examination, they could be certified to using this system. Otherwise, it's, uh, it's kind of like a, a pure EV car driving by the electric motors. Right and you can drive up and down, but you cannot using these functions. Well, you know, hearing that actually gives me a little bit of comfort because I think as drivers, you know, I had my, I got my driver's license 36 yep. years ago. Yes. Okay. When we were looking on a map, we took out a piece of paper <laughs> and somebody in the passenger seat would say, okay, you got to drive this line. Mm -hmm. There was papers all over the place. Now this is interactive. My understanding of this, as being a driver for over three decades is the following. Here's an opportunity yeah. to be in a car with an amazing environment and also good for the environment, yes. uh, you know, for green energy yeah. or for the uh, climate uh, situation that we're in. Yeah. But also it's educating us as drivers. We haven't been or been tested uh, in, in decades. Now, yeah. I don't know how it is in China, but in Canada, when you get your driver's license at 16 or 18 years of age, mm. that's it. You're on your own. Mm. This here gives us the ability to sharpen us as drivers, to help us interact more and understand the road more. Yeah. Just by looking at these screens, I get a very good idea of what situation we're in. It, many years ago, you couldn't see something like this. Yes, never. But now this car is telling me, Who's behind me? Who's on the right? Who's on the left? Who is potentially uh, could surprise and, and come out and, and hit my car? So it gives me, once again, more comfort. And I think as people get older, they can rely and they can yes. have trust on this technology yes. to give them a, a safe journey. This kind of car, my mother is 78 or 79 years old. If she got taught and trained in this car, I would be so happy and never have to worry or at least worry much less than I do now. How much would it cost? Is there a cost savings between a new energy vehicle like this one mm. to a gas powered car? Well, um, I don't have uh, exact experience, but we have uh, some kind of communication, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, I drive a 2.0 uh, liters um, uh, engine, engine, I mean gasoline uh, mm -hmm. vehicles for, for myself and uh, um, my colleagues, the driving avatar 1.1, we have a comparison like for example, their charging fee for a month is about 200 to 300 RMB. But for me, I almost spending like uh, 1.5 thousand RMB per okay. month. So that's, you know, it's more like five or six times cost per month right hmm okay uh, but do you think if, if you drew if you were driving a gas power car it would be more expensive yes okay considerably for, for normal use for yes. normal use okay yeah um, is there any advantages now I see a lot of the cars in the cities have green license plates on them yes. that's representing that they're a new energy vehicle yeah uh, is there any advantages in Chongqing for a new energy vehicle? Do you get any special parking privileges or anything like that? Yeah, in the very beginning, the green plate vehicles, they can park into the public um, parking lot without charging. And mm -hmm. uh, and also, you know, because we have so, Chongqing is a big city, we have mm -hmm. a lot of uh, vehicles on the road. So uh, the number of the vehicles has to be, uh, you know, under control. Mm -hmm. to avoid a very heavy traffic jam. So the green plate vehicles is not restrained by this rule. Okay. Our climate in Canada is we always believe gas power cars have power and they can get through hard 
terrain and hard climates. There's no doubt that that's helped us mm -hmm. in the last, we'll call it century. Yeah. And uh, we have a lot of history in the east coast of our country of manufacturers. And of course, knowing Ford manufacturing was so close to Canada. But I think what people don't seem to realize here is that these cars are innovating just like we saw with the mobile phone industry yeah. it innovated from just traditional calls to now being part of our life and these cars in general are life-changing and yes. i think unless you get yourself in a car like this you're not going to understand it and we continue to see a massive uh, you know, explosion of EV cars uh, all over China. Yeah. America is trying, but they're not able to adapt, I would say, the amount of numbers that they're doing here in China. Who is the target market for Avatar now? The target, you mean the regions or? Um, no, just what kind of customer are you looking for? Oh, yeah, okay. So it's kind of like, you know, Avatar, we, we talk like uh, ACV, mm -hmm. which means um, smart uh, electric vehicle. So for those customers, they are more like, you know, the new generation, they have nice, pretty incomes, mm -hmm. and their lifestyle is like kind of like joy me lifestyle. Okay. Uh, just make self happy, and those kind of person is our target customers. Got it. Okay. Let's go down here mm -hmm. and park right beside that red car to the left here. Okay. The red car, right? Yeah. So here we push this parking assistant. Okay. Then you can, you can see his scanning. You want to stand here? Yeah, I would like okay. to park right so there. So we saw the car is here, right? Mm -hmm. And we choosing the position and okay. we start. Then release the brake pedal. It will cast starting to plan its rotating and coming back to this position. And let's, let's say some kid ran out in front of the car. It yes. Stop. Yes. Okay. Good. This is cool. Safety first. It's impressive. How does it know how to do that? Yes, because the Avatros, the high sensitivity sensors around us. What I've just experienced over the last 30 minutes driving in this car is something extraordinary, really. It is life-changing, not just the way we drive, but the way vehicles communicate. Now, I've owned over 20 cars in my 36 years of driving, and this is something to be excited about. Where is this going to go? Where are China's new energy vehicles going to take us? You need to stay tuned because this is one very exciting time to be a car owner. Hey everyone, it's Alex back here again and you will notice that I am standing out front of something very interesting. I'm in a shopping mall here. You think I'm here for clothes, but actually I'm here to look at new energy vehicles and one of them is called the brand NEO. Sella, is it correct? Yes. Is that correct? Nice correct? to meet you again, Nice Alex. to meet you. Nice to meet you. As you can see, NEO is a high-end luxury new energy vehicle in China. When you mean luxury, mm -hmm. What kind of prices are we talking in RMB to US dollars? The most expensive car in our brand is around 500 grand in RMB. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this one is like three, uh, 300 grand. I'm just looking at it. So we, we have Italian tires on this car, Pirelli mm -hmm. tires. Mm -hmm. So this whole stereotype from America that says these cars are just plastics and electric engine put together is we can see re immediately here with pirelli tires 20 inch rims on these cars these cars are very very high quality we are really serious about making the cars uh, as for example for this car we are looking have we are looking at the italian tire mm -hmm. and this car can accelerate from one to 100 kilometers in about four seconds. And this is also built to meet the standards in ENC Cup and uh, NC Cup standards. It's re really safe. All the body is covered in aluminum. Those two are the lighters integrated into the car. Okay. We call this a watchtower design. We use a combination of cameras and lighter. We combine those together to uh, complete the assisted driving. Most North Americans only hear of one car brand, 
Can you guess Tesla? what that is? Tesla. <laughs> exactly. Uh -huh. From my perspective here in the North American markets, uh -huh. these cars are not getting to America. And this is real sad because I have been in uh, other car brands. This will be one of my first times in a Neo here. Mm -hmm. And I can already immediately see from a cosmetic point that it is a piece of art. I travel with this car and I have to power swap four times a month. So four charges a month. Four swaps. Four That's one four special swaps. thing we have. Okay, we're changing now. We're going yeah. from charges to swap. We so four we swaps don't a month. Charge. We swap. And every, every, every swap uses like uh, 90 RMB. 90? Mm. So, so if 90, we do a little 15. simple mathematics, we yeah. use 360 RMB a month and compare that to a petrol car. So uh, I'm going to add that up. Mm -hmm. That is a staggering savings. <laughs> that is anywhere from 75 to about 80% cost reduction on fuel. Let's say if I own a BMW, every petrol filling, I, it may cost me like 360. We're not only providing a car, we but also provide a community. How do they communicate? Are the cars communicating to each other? Like, oh, or they no. just walk into sales rooms like this? We have a user-only center okay. back there. Now, I've never heard of the user-only <laughs> center. Can you show me what the user-only center is? What that Welcome. means? Welcome. All right, let's go. Let's have a look what that means. Okay, QR code, special yeah, treatment. Open here. You're part of the club. Yeah, welcome to the club. All right. <laughs> so, okay. welcome to news. Every new house has a special drink. This is called a wonderland of green illusion. I can see now this community is very uh, interesting. It's mm -hmm. connecting people. It's people that have cars that are connecting people that have cars and how they can enjoy cars uh, in, in every aspect. This is like, would say, a traditional way to charge cars, right? Yes, that's true. How long would it take using something like this? Let's okay. say if we didn't have the battery swapping, because <laughs> we're getting to the battery swapping. Okay, so if we want to charge our vehicle from, let's say, 20% to 80%, yep. it will use like, uh, so half an hour. Except Neo, other brands also built a lot of charger facilities uh, nationwide. So they're multi-use and multi-cars. Yeah. Okay. So now let's go look at the battery swapping. Till today, we have two thousand and one hundred power swap stations nationwide. Over two thousand of these nationwide, yeah. huh? Yeah. Why did they go to the battery swapping? For a lot of electricity vehicles, the most difficulty for the users to use them is the time for charging. No matter how fast it is, it will still take like 30 minutes to 45 minutes to be fully charged. But if you are in a rush, it's not very convenient. But if you have power swap station, all the process to get a fully charged uh, battery, it will only take you like three to four minutes for the 3.0 platform. For the 2.0 platform, it will only take seven to eight minutes. Okay. On the other hand, do you know why fast charging is so difficult? No, no, tell me, tell me. Because it's a great challenge for the network. Mm. Uh, if you want to have many spots, many facilities to fast, fast charging, it's very difficult for the network, for the electricity to support. But the power swap station, the, the theory is really, really simple. We have the batteries charged when we are not busy, when the electricity is not busy. And when you need it, we have a fully charged battery. You don't need to charge it right away. So mm. you save time, save energy and friendly for the network. Hi, Nomi. Hey. I want to go to the future of the future. Okay, let's hit the road. Now we're experiencing the comfortable mode. Comfortable mode, okay. It won't accelerate too fast, and when we take a break here, it feels soft. Mm. Yeah, much different driving experience than even some other <laughs> new energy vehicles that I've driven in before. Uh huh. And it's very easy to switch because here, this is the comfort mode, and this is sporty, and this is energy saving. You can just switch it with your mm, wheel. Now we are going to a white road. Okay. 
have a test drive for the sporty plus mode. So just the click of a button can put us into sport mode? Mm -hmm. Just like that, huh? Already switched into sporty plus mode. Sporty plus mode. There's a red sign. Wow. Uh. <laughs> wow, okay, you can really feel the pull of that, huh? Yeah. This is... So that's what we just went through? <laughs> yeah, that is what we went through. Okay. And there's all the other vehicles around me which detected by the LiDAR. So all those cameras are always busy feeding information back yeah. to this. Great. Yeah. See, like, what I've learned today is mm -hmm. amazing. What I've learned is battery swapping, uh -huh. okay, instead of charging. Well, it, we have both choices, right? The reliability of these cars, the accessibility of these cars to be able to handle all types of weather, all types of traffic environments, the saving, the value, the speed, the power. I mean, it, there is so much to these cars. And I mean, what is your selling point when somebody comes in and for the first time to see a car like this that maybe they have never driven a new energy vehicle, what do you say to them? I will definitely tell them this is the best electric vehicle you can find in China. As you can see, it's beautiful, it's powerful, it's comfortable, and this is your choice. Well, that's quite the selling point. <laughs> and uh, to our friends from America that are watching, we hope that these cars get into that market, not just because China is trying to get the new energy vehicle market, but these are cars that do change your life. There are many things about it. The safety, the data, the uh, savings that you have as, as a person that owns these vehicles. I can only hope that these videos attract more of an audience and that soon we will be seeing these cars on American roads. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Talk soon.